Hi guys, it's Miss Crystal here, and as you guys can see, I'm dressed a little weird today uh, for today's video. This is a Bees Keeper outfit, kind of like uh, the protective gear that they wear when they go out to inspect a beehive. Now, you guys can probably guess that whatever I'm doing today is going to involve bees, and you're right. I have an art activity, art activity for us today. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about bees. So anybody who knows me or has been on school at the school with me knows I love, love, love bees. They're not only my favorite insect, they're probably some of my favorite animals in the whole world right after cats. And I love cats. <laughs> but so let's talk about what does this outfit do? Well, bees are naturally very curious. So when a beekeeper goes to inspect a hive to make sure that they're doing okay or to take out some of the excess honey, beekeepers will wear this to protect themselves. They need this mesh screen in front of their face because bees are curious. They want to know who is this? What is this giant thing? So they have a tendency to try to crawl everywhere, not to attack or anything. They just, they're curious. And the color white is a very neutral color. If I were to wear this when I was to go look at a hive, I wouldn't even wear this blue shirt underneath because it's too bright of a color and they might think I'm a flower and want to inspect me even more. It's tight around like the wrists and stuff. Normally I would be wearing gloves when looking at a hive, um, just so bees don't try to crawl in there. And again, they're curious. They want to see what this is. So today's art activity, we're going to be looking at how bees make things. So right here, I actually have a piece of honeycomb that I've kept. If you can kind of see closely, you can see all these little hexagonal shapes. And whenever bees make things, they make things in hex hexagons instead of circles or squares. It's the natural way they do things. And the reason, this for this is because when you have the circles, you can have a lot of empty space. Taking, for example, like this piece of a bubble wrap. There's a lot of empty space between the circles. But with hexagons, it lets them get close. That way they're making the most use out of all the space they have. So today's art project is we're going to be making our own little piece of honeycomb or you can even make a beehive itself if you want. This is kind of what it would look like if you want to make a natural beehive. But what we'll need for today's activity is you're going to need a piece of paper, preferably the construction paper because it's a little bit thicker and it can hold the paint a little bit better. Um, and then some paint. I'm gonna be using green and blue paint because these are some of my favorite colors. Um, scissors, a pencil, that way you can outline things, and then a marker to make your outlines a little bit darker. You can also use colored pencils if you want. And then you're going to need some bubble wrap, preferably if you have bubble wrap. If you don't have that, that's fine. You can use Q-tips to make these little dots. It'll just take a little bit longer. Or you could even use your finger. But if you use your hands to do it, make sure you have your parents okay because finger painting, as we know, can get pretty messy. So I'm actually gonna be making both of these today. I'm gonna be doing my hexagonal honeycomb piece as well as the beehive piece. So I've kind of done, I've sketched out an outline of what each of these shapes are going to look like in pencil first. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline it in a black marker to make it a little bit darker. Now that I've kind of confirmed that this is the outline that I want. 
Again, I always recommend sketching things out in pencil first before committing to paint or markers where it's a little bit harder, a bit more permanent, and you can't just erase it like you can a pencil. So now that, now that I've gone ahead and outlined my two images in the marker, we're ready to start painting. Again, if you have bubble wrap, you can do that. It's not quite the hexagonal shape. Oh, I already got paint on it somehow. Um, it's not quite the hexagonal shape that bees make, but it's a lot easier than just going in through and making hexagons. And it has the same cool effect on art. Um, you can also, again, use a Q-tip if you have Q-tips. If not, the tip of your finger will work just fine. It's just a little bit messier. I also have this bigger piece of a bubble wrap. They're much bigger bubbles. So maybe we'll try that to see what kind of a different effect we get there. So I think for the first one, I'm going to start on my the little beehive that I have. Ooh, make sure that doesn't hit the corner and get in the paint. I'm also going to lay down this extra piece of paper right here as well to help kind of prevent any mess. So I think what I'm going to do is on each three of these layers, I'm going to try a different technique of adding the kind of little circles we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing maybe this first layer in the small bubble wrap, this middle layer in the big bubble wrap, and the top layer in the Q-tip. So before I kind of go through and I do it, I do kind of want to show you guys how you're going to do it with the bubble wrap. You're going to take your bubble wrap, kind of find a good section that isn't too popped. And then, let's see, blue or green, blue or green, that is the question. I guess we'll start off with, we'll start off with blue. So I'm going to dip it in the blue, being very careful, well, kind of careful, we got a little bit of green in, and kind of try to shake off any excess. Kind of, we'll do a little dabbing right here to get rid of that excess. And then once you've got a good amount on, got the good amount on, and you're just going to kind of press across your picture. And that's how you do it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do each of these layers. Obviously with the Q-tip, you just kind of dip the Q-tip in and do it. And we'll see which one has the cooler effect. All right, so I'm all done. So let's take a look at the three different techniques. The bottom layer, which was the small bubble wrap, is definitely kind of cool and it's really fast, but it's still a little bit messy as you can see and if you want to kind of add more like here you have like all these little gaps and stuff it's really hard because it ends up kind of just kind of overlaying each other and it looks just like a big splotch which wasn't really the effect I was going for um I definitely would say the big bubble wrap was definitely not the most ideal so you can take this as a learning experience for you guys as well too um definitely does not look at all like circles the Q-tip method was definitely the cleanest, but it does take a little bit longer. So these are how these three effects look if you want to try doing it yourself at home. But I think for my hexagon, hmm, let's see, which one do I want to do for my hexagon that I'm going to make next? I think I am going to go with the bubble wrap method for this one. We'll just try to be a little bit better at spreading it out. So I'm going to see if I can go through like a, a blending between the blue and the green across it, but we'll see how well it actually goes. So here was my final honeycomb piece. As you can tell, it looks a little bit messy, but I still think it'll look pretty cool when it dries. It definitely takes a, it's definitely a take technique that takes getting used to. So I really recommend practicing on scratch paper. Um, unfortunately, in my case, I think my scratch paper prints actually came out better than my final attempt did. But art, like any kind of 
other activity is kind of all about experimenting. So see what works for you and try different things out. Hope you guys found this interesting and hopefully learned a few things about bees as well. See you next time. Bye.